Dad, can I have $20,000 to buy a Bitcoin? $20,000 to buy a Bitcoin? Son, why do you need $35,000 to buy a Bitcoin? You know, $60,000 is a lot for a Bitcoin. <laughs> this is crazy. We have to talk about Bitcoin and what's happening because now that YouTubers have started making Bitcoin videos again, you know we've reached a peak. A peak of meme mania, that is, because that's the best part about Bitcoin going up, all the memes. Like this one, for example, of the awesome Jim Cramer coping with reality. It's depressing. I, I, I don't want to- What has Bitcoin ever done for mankind? But, do you ever, are you ever big on a Bitcoin phone? Watson, come here, I need you. I mean, what is it? Just the look on his face is priceless. He's like, what has Bitcoin done for you? What has it done for anybody? The media is like, darn it, the Bitcoin CEO is at it again, raising his prices. <laughs> that man is a lunatic. Bitcoin hits 60K. My boss, why were you late? Me, watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, these are so good. Of course, for the non-believers, Bitcoin is still a scam. Now, by the time you're watching this video, I have no idea what Bitcoin will be worth. It could be much higher or much lower, probably since I bought into it. But today, I wanna show you why all of this is happening with Bitcoin and how most people very soon will have exposure to it, whether they like it or not. It's gonna be kind of crazy. Now, this week, Bitcoin went parabolic and it reached over $60,000 per coin, which is a price level we haven't seen since November 2021. And why it's happening is exactly like I described in my Bitcoin price prediction, which if you haven't seen that video, you have to watch it. Bitcoin is so far still following that power law. And that's mostly driven by unprecedented demand for the spot Bitcoin ETF. And BlackRock's ETF, ticker symbol IBIT specifically, had some of its biggest days in the market this week. Right now, BlackRock holds over 150,000 Bitcoins that are worth almost nine and a half billion dollars, which is just insane. So there's a lot to cover in this video, including the Coinbase glitch that showed everyone's portfolio at zero. We'll talk about the Ethereum spot ETF and when that will potentially happen. And I wanna explain how everyone will soon be helping grow Bitcoin's price, whether they like Bitcoin or they hate it. And I also briefly wanna cover Edward Snowden's prediction for Bitcoin this year, because he says a national government will be revealed this year to have been buying Bitcoin as the modern replacement for monetary gold without having disclosed that fact publicly. That would just be insane. Imagine another country adding Bitcoin to its national reserves. Could it be the Germans or the Russians? All of that and a bag of chips coming up next. Let's get into it. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well. Come for the finance and stay for the Bitcoin. I need your help. I would love to talk to Mr. Michael Saylor, but there's a problem. I can't log into my ex account because it was compromised and no one can log in, not even the people that did it. If anyone out there can help me get my Twitter or ex account back, that would be amazing because I'd love to interview the man who made billions of dollars buying the very thing that people were telling him he shouldn't and he was crazy to buy, so much so that he had to step down as the CEO of his own company but now he's back with a side of french fries looking like a genius. Why I'd like to talk to him though is because something very interesting is about to happen to his company that will have a lot of people exposed to Bitcoin even if they don't like it or don't know about it. And here's how. MicroStrategy just surpassed the very important number of $15.8 billion in market cap. That's how big a company needs to be in order to be included into the S&P 500. Once MicroStrategy, that's this stock, gets included into the S&P 500, anyone who invests into the stock market, whether it's pension funds or target date funds or most 401ks, they will have exposure to micro strategy. Now, how it really works is Michael Saylor loves to borrow against his stock in order to buy more Bitcoin. Now, as he adds Bitcoin to his portfolio inside of micro strategy, when Bitcoin goes up in value, so does micro strategy. And more and more people, anyone who invests into the S&P 500 will have exposure to MicroStrategy. As MicroStrategy grows, he can borrow more against it in order to buy more Bitcoin. And if Bitcoin goes up, then guess what? His company becomes more valuable, more money gets put into MicroStrategy through ETFs in the S&P 500. It's a never ending feedback loop and it's kind of genius. And I'm wondering, will this actually happen? I'd love to ask him, so if you can help me get the account back, please let me know. But that aside, 
here's why Bitcoin is going crazy. So here it is, by the numbers, the simplest and easiest way to really understand why Bitcoin will probably continue to go up a lot more than people think. Since the launch of the spot Bitcoin ETFs, over 317,000 Bitcoins were bought for a grand total dollar value of $19 billion. And that's in just one month since its launch. The spot Bitcoin ETF has broken every single ETF record in history. Now let's take a look at the supply and demand though, because the imbalance of the two is what creates that price action. Now, right now as we speak, we are creating or mining 900 Bitcoins per day. That is a fact, that number stays constant. The only time that number changes is once every four years when Bitcoin goes through something called the halving or what some people call the halvening. And as of Tuesday this week, over 10,000 Bitcoins were bought by these ETFs. So 900 Bitcoins were made and over 10,000 were bought in a single day. That's a difference of over 11 times. Now, I would argue that this is not a normal rate of buying. If anything, I would argue the opposite. This is FOMO. People don't wanna get left behind. But still, even if you cut out that 10,000 and you assume a more normal rate, you don't have to buy a lot of Bitcoin in order for it to continue to go up. In fact, in April of this year, Bitcoin will go through another halving. And that rate, that is 900 per day, will be cut to 450 per day. And as long as these ETFs are buying 451 Bitcoins, that's still enough for Bitcoin to slowly go up in value. In fact, here's a chart of just how quickly the ETF holdings are going up every single week. The demand is through the roof, which is also why in the countries where inflation is a problem, you'll see in these price graphs that Bitcoin has already reached an all-time high and surpassing it, even though it has not done that in the US market yet. It's crazy to think that for a lot of countries around the world, Bitcoin has already reached its all-time high. Also right now, 93% of all the Bitcoins that will ever exist already exist in the market today. But there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins to ever exist. In fact, less than that, maybe closer to 16 million because at least five of them have been lost to history forever. Now, 16 million, what does that even mean? For context, there are over 40 million millionaires around the world which means hypothetically speaking, if every single millionaire in the world wanted to get their hands on just half a Bitcoin, they would not be able to do it because there's a supply shortage. And this is editing Andre here with the latest numbers because there's actually 6 million Bitcoins missing, which leaves us with 15 million. And as of 2023, there were 64 million millionaires. Dividing those two numbers out means the most anyone could ever get at that rate is 0.23, just under a quarter of a Bitcoin, which is kind of crazy to think about. So long story short, why Bitcoin is going up in price so much is because the demand is far outweighing the supply. Now, if you wanna know exactly how high Bitcoin could potentially go up in the future, I really suggest that you watch this Bitcoin price prediction video because I think it's gonna blow your mind. Now, another really interesting thing that happened this week is what happened to Coinbase because users logged onto Coinbase to check their balance and it's gone. Coinbase was showing its users that they had a balance of zero dollars. Someone even had as much as $3.6 million in Coinbase. Now, anyone who's been in crypto long enough knows that that is Chef Gusto's recipe for a heart attack. And uh, take it from someone who's experienced loss on exchanges, don't keep that much money on exchanges. No one is safe. But because of that glitch, Bitcoin's entire market cap and the value of the whole system crashed by $100 billion. Bitcoin fell from 64,000 down to 59,000. And all of that happened in the span of 15 minutes. And why it happened is most likely because Coinbase wasn't prepared to handle all that traffic. Everyone logged in to check their balance and to probably buy more Bitcoin because that's what happens. No one cares about Bitcoin or a stock until it goes up and that's when people chase it. And data shows that when we get close to an all-time high and we surpass it, that leads to more all-time highs. And data proves this to be true because all-time highs are clustered together and so are the lows. Now this is a graph for the S&P 500, the stock market, but the psychology for both assets is more or less the same. And this sort of psychology works not only on ordinary people, but also on other institutional hedge funds and asset management companies. Morgan Stanley is trying to get in on the action by adding Bitcoin ETF language and Morgan Stanley manages over $1.3 trillion for their clients. They're like, you mean Bitcoin is not a scam? 
I can make how much money with my fees? So higher highs cluster together and so do the lows. It took me a while to get it down, but once I understood it, it was really helpful for me personally. Now at a full disclosure, just for the sake of transparency so I can share with you my losses and my gains, I did buy into Coinbase at the IPO when they released and it was pretty much at the very peak. I bought into it, I was super excited, the market was doing great, Bitcoin was doing great, and then the market tanked and it lost over 80% of its value. I didn't panic, I held on, but I learned not to chase something just because everyone's excited about it. But in the future, I think Coinbase will still do extremely well, and it's come back a lot since then because of its role in the custody of all the ETFs. Coinbase is the company that holds and protects the Bitcoin inside of the ETFs that were released. And I imagine in the future, when Bitcoin becomes worth even more, custody of Bitcoin will become a bigger part of Coinbase's income. And as more and more people get comfortable holding their Bitcoin through an ETF, I imagine some of them will learn about it and they'll actually self custody and buy it directly through Coinbase, which will hopefully help them out with their growth. But in the long term, I honestly have no idea. The more interesting question is, what happens next, especially with the Ethereum spot ETF? According to Jim Cramer, it should bloom and do well, which means we're probably never gonna get one. In all seriousness, the likelihood of a spot Ethereum ETF is pretty decent, but we're not gonna know what happens until at least March this year, so very soon when they get together with the SEC, and some experts are saying we could get one as early as May this year, which would be amazing. And if it does happen, I imagine Ethereum's price growth will follow that of Bitcoin. It'll be slow at first, and then it will pick up. Now, another interesting thing I saw is, of course, Edward Snowden's prediction about Bitcoin that a country will reveal that it's been buying Bitcoin. He didn't say which country, could be anything. Could be the US, could be Japan, could be Germany, could be Russia. He didn't specify, but that would be insane. Either way, at least one country has already done that, El Salvador, whose president actually tweeted that they're up 40% on their position and that their critics are also silent now, which I thought was kind of interesting. What I find personally interesting is that in order for Bitcoin to reach $1 million per coin, according to almost every expert asset manager, one thing that has to happen is that countries need to start adding Bitcoin to their portfolio and putting it into their reserves. And why they have an incentive to do that is because Bitcoin's price potential is limited only to the limitlessness of how much fiat we print into existence. And as long as we keep on doing that, Bitcoin's price should continue to grow. As for me personally though, I'm still gonna continue to dollar cost average into Bitcoin, which is what I have been doing, and I put a lot more into it, around the $40,000 range, but while I was visiting Japan, I was just exploring, I really wanted to put my Fundrise money to work because I've been investing in the app for four years and I wanted to make the video about what happened with this money. Let me know if you'd like me to make that video, but I wanted to liquidate this money and put it into Bitcoin, and I thought, it would be my luck if by the time I get back to the States, Bitcoin's gonna be worth so much more. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. And now I'm not sure if I should just continue to dollar cost average or just lump sum all of that in right now. I'd love to know your thoughts though. What would you do if you were in my position? Also, don't forget to check out that Bitcoin price prediction video. It's one of my favorite videos that I've ever made and hopefully it helps you out. In the meantime though, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to grab your free stocks. Links are all down below and then go track them automatically with the spreadsheet link down below on my Patreon. Love you, thank you so much for watching this video. I'd love to see you back here on Monday and Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. See you soon, bye-bye.